On Saturday, Will and his partner Ned celebrated their 10-year anniversary. Will had been planning for months and at breakfast presented Ned with a gift. Can you believe it's been 10 years? Go on, open it. Inside, Ned found two tickets to the Broadway show he'd wanted to see for years, Hamilton. Oh, honey, that's amazing. Thank you. When are we going? Tonight. Our flight to New York leaves at noon, and we have seven throw seats for the 8 o'clock show. Meanwhile, back at the water cooler on Monday morning, a co-worker of Will's asks him a seemingly simple question. So, what'd you do this weekend, Will? Will finds himself doing some mental calisthenics, and he's barely had a sip of coffee. The first question he has to ask himself is, have I opened up to this person? Have I told them I'm gay? Let's assume that the answer to that question is yes. The second question Will asks himself is, but have they got it yet? Are they educated and do they have a level of awareness about 2S LGBTQI plus inclusion? Let's assume that the answer to that question is also yes. The result? Will gets to share his excellent adventure and starts work feeling energized and part of the team. Lapse time? Five minutes. But let's go back to the first question. Have I opened up to this person yet? And assume that the answer is no. In this scenario, Will finds himself going through the panic of trying to hide his identity, sometimes referred to as code switching. Oh, not much. I saw a play with a friend. Do I know her? Is this someone you're dating? No, uh, she, she's just a friend. So, what show did you see? Just a local production, but how, how was your weekend? In this situation, we find Will being evasive and lying. He's doing everything he can to ensure his coworkers don't find out he's gay. But let's change the scenario a bit. Let's assume for the question, have I opened up to this person, that the answer is yes. But for the question, have they got it yet, the answer is no. We find Will playing a very different role. In this scenario, Will takes on the role of educator. He finds himself dealing with people misgendering his partner, thinking of Ned as his business partner or roommate, and generally dealing with his coworkers' ignorance and lack of awareness. That can be a huge emotional and mental burden for Will, and it's not his actual job. In either situation, Will starts his workday feeling drained, down about lying, appearing evasive or unfriendly, and generally just feeling like he's not part of the team. Lapse time, an eternity. But what does a situation like this actually cost employers? Because there is a cost. Warning, there is about to be math. Let's assume that a 2S LGBTQI plus person working for an organization that is not inclusive spends on average 15 minutes of their workday educating people or being evasive. There are 124,800 minutes in a work year, give or take. Based on the original assumption, that would mean each 2S LGBTQI plus person in an organization that isn't inclusive spends 3,900 minutes of their work year educating people on 2S LGBTQI plus inclusion or masking their identity. Essentially, they waste 65 hours per year doing something that they shouldn't have to do and that their employer is paying them for. The median individual income in Canada and the United States is around $50,000. If a 2S LGBTQI plus person is wasting 65 hours educating or being evasive, that means $1,562.50 of their annual salary is going to something that isn't their job. Let's assume that 5% of the population is 2S LGBTQI plus. The research is all over the place on this for a variety of reasons, but it's safe to say that 5% is realistic, if not potentially a bit low. Now let's assume that 20% of 2S LGBTQI plus people are not out at work. There are a variety of studies to support this and actually show that somewhere between 46 and 69% of 2S LGBTQI plus people are not out at work. But to keep these numbers conservative, we'll stick with 20%. That means that 1% of the total workforce population is wasting $1,562.50 of their annual salary. The Canadian workforce includes just under 21 million people. The United States workforce is just under 166 million people. That means 1% of the Canadian workforce is just over 200,000, and in the United States, it's 1.6 million. 
Based on those numbers, Canadian employers are wasting $321,621,875 and American employers are wasting $259,203,232,812.50, all because they're not creating inclusive spaces for 2SLGBTQI plus people. And remember, these numbers are conservative. What do you think? Is it worth it to ensure your workplace is 2SLGBTQI plus inclusive?